In this work, the results of an experimental program carried out in Córdoba, Argentina are shown. Carried out jointly by archaeological projects in Córdoba and Catamarca. It reports on a study of the gestures of use and microware analysis of experimental stone tools used to roughen woods and bones, in order to discuss how the analytical categories currently used in Argentina in the aceto typology are utilized. The sample consisted of 96 experimental lithic instruments, made in two different rock types, quartz from the central highland region of Argentina, in Córdoba, and a vulcanite from the northwestern puna of Argentina, in Catamarca. They were flink napped using direct percussion and pressure using hard stone hammers, soft wood and bone retouches. Expert flink nappers from Argentina, among them Carlos Astero and Salomon Hoxman, participated in their manufacture. A group of tools were used for 15 minutes and then the other until the instruments were dull. The tools are going to be used with palm print grip without a handle to work hard and soft native wood and dry and fresh bones of Lama Wernicoe and Boss Towers. Gouges work with a shallow linear roughing. They are used with an open angle of attack by applying pressure, push or percussion. Chisels work in a linear and shallow way, applying pressure, pull, push or sometimes percussion with an open angle of attack. And cobalt chisels also work with a linear roughing and percussion, creating deep undercuts. The angle of attack depends on the material to be worked. After use, the active edges were cleaned from microscopic observation under different magnifications. The gouges, such as those used by current carpenters, work comfortably under the gesture of pressure by means of interdigital manual grip and palm print holding, and in a few cases the percussion was chosen when the back of the instrument allowed it. In both raw materials, wear was observed as line of polishes, due to the sharper bevel in relation to the chisels and cold chisels. The images show polishing, crushing and the destruction of the surface in high sectors. Chisels, such as those currently used nowadays, function comfortably under the gesture of interdigital hand grip and palm print pressure, and in a few cases they were used by percussion when the back of the instrument allowed it. The microware appears in the forms of areas or fields, probably because the bevel is more obtuse compared to the gouges. Bursting is noticed in the raised sectors of the microtopography, microflaking at edges and bright polished fields. Cold chisels, like modern ones, comfortably function as intermediaries under the technical gesture of percussion. In both raw materials, wear was observed in the form of areas or bright fields, as in chisels. There were white polished sectors of greater brightness according to the white material, and also microflaking was found, which generated a reactivation of the edge. The micropolishes were more intense in gouges and cold chisels. The microflaking was mostly found in cold chisels followed by chisels and gouges. The crushing was intense and even in the three groups, standing out slightly in chisels. And finally, rounding was a trace present mainly on chisels and with low on moderate presence on gouges and cold chisels. Regarding the instruments that worked on soft woods and fresh bones, the microware was generally smoother with an undulated surface and a greater superficial rounding. For the instruments that rough dry bone, we can describe, as we previously expressed for hard woods, a similarity with a predominance of polishing and crushing over the other types of traces. Finally, the work material that created less intense modifications was fresh bone. Rounding is predominant over the other traces that damage the edge of a tool. Regarding the gestures of use of the tools, in those used by percussion, the common traces were mainly crushes, followed by micropolishes and microflaking on the edges. The pressure gesture generated larger polished fields, followed by rounding and surface crushing. Also, we were able to find spontaneous revival of the edge. This aspect generated prolongation, in most cases, of the activity's duration and facilitated the penetration of the instrument into the work material. In order to discuss categories that were characterized using morphological variables, we need to return to the concept of habitus, proposed by Bourdieu in 2007, regarding how subjects seek to achieve a certain task in a specific context through built-in skills, in this case, roughing. The difficulties that arose in the activities were faced with adjustments in the angle or position of the body, and it was independent of the edge's angle. Thus, the gesture of use becomes more relevant than the edge's angle. According to Astero's typology, gouges edges have less than 50 degrees, but the activities are carried out easily when the angles are wider and the bevel angles are between 50 and 80 degrees. Therefore, we would be in a position to communicate that morphological differences of certain lithic instruments do not necessarily merit a typological differentiation in subcategories. We could then enclose gouges, chisels and cold chisels within the same typological group as roughing tools. Thanks for your attention and you're welcome to visit our lab when travelling becomes easier.